Alright, welcome back to the Autodesk 3DS Max 2018 Classroom, YouTube Classroom. Uh, I'm Mr. Don, and today uh, we are going to talk about the keyframe and uh, time configuration panels. Uh, we're going to try and get this cube to bounce, and then um, see how that goes. Alright, great. So we left off last time with our cube that animated kind of like this. Now you've probably spent the last 10 or 15 minutes sort of figuring out ways to play with it and sort of experiment. You have something along this which jumping around and moving, yada, 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 which is great. But today we are going to move on. So uh, what we have, all this stuff is cool, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight through this entire area, delete those keyframes, grab this last keyframe, delete it, and now we have what's basically a nothing. The, the timeline, you can scrub the timeline and nothing happens. Go back to zero, make sure auto key is set. And now I'm going to hit W and I'm going to change the position of the world uh, location. So currently I'm 80, negative 80 degrees off the Y axis. So I'm going to right click on that and move this to zero. When I do that, I'm also going to set a key. So now my cube will stay in the exact same place the entire time. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have an object. That we're going to take this cube and we're going to make it jump. All right. Well, more like bounce. Jump is different, but bounce is what we want. So when something bounces, it goes up in the air. It slows down as gravity slowly takes hold, and then it starts slowly moving down, and then it goes fast, it squashes, and then it quickly bounces up, and then it slows down, and it goes doing, doing, doing. The sound effects are, are extra. You don't have to pay extra for that, but you get the point. So boing, boing, boing. It speeds up as it comes down, and then it hits. It should squash, and then it comes back up until gravity takes hold, and then it bounces again. I'm going to right click while I'm still holding my left mouse button and it should zero out. Cool. So, but now I've got a position at zero, right? My pivot point is really important um, because that's where a lot of our animation, uh, the core of our animation is going to take place there. So we got to make sure we're very consistent about where our pivot point is. So everybody's pivot point should be at the middle of this. If you want to start a brand new file, that's great. It'll work. Just make sure you turn on auto key. All right, great. So we know we are going to start at the bottom. We want it to go up in the air and we want it to come down, right? And bounce. So let's go ahead and just to just try that simple process. So from zero at a hundred, we'd learned before that if we want something to start and stop in the same place, we're going to highlight that key, hold shift and drag over. I drag all the way to frame 100 and let go. So now from the beginning to the end, nothing changes. That means anything that we do in the middle will automatically end up at frame 100 and then it'll loop just fine. So at frame 50, let's go ahead and drag it up here. And it doesn't really matter how high. Mine's about 160. Okay? Just somewhere where you can see it. Now if we hit play, let's watch it. That does not look like a bouncing ball. Right? It just it doesn't. It's it's moving too slow. It's very, very even. It's slow there, but it's also slow at the bottom, and we want it to be fast. So we need to think about where this object is going to, how it's going to move, really. So we need it to get up faster and then slow down and then go down, right? So we want this to get higher faster. So if we look at frame 25, it's halfway between 0 and 50 where realistically we should make it halfway much faster, right? So what we need to do is make sure that this at 40, it needs to be higher so that it slows down, okay? So at frame 40, we want it even higher. Or at frame 20, actually at frame uh, 15, we want it to be faster. So we're gonna, let's go to frame 25 and drag it up closer to the top. So now it goes up, slows down, and I'll come back down. So since that's frame 25, we can click on it, shift, and drag this over to 75. And now let's watch it. That's closer. It's still a little slow. 
So I think what we need to do is think about like, how do we measure time? All right? We measure time generally um, by frames. Now frames in video games are usually referred to as 60 frames a second or 30 frames a second. So if this whole bounce process is going to take a second, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, bounce, 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 we need to make sure that it's completing in 60 frames. So let's see, one, one thousand. So currently, we need to figure out how fast our second, our second is. And we can do that by this button down here, which is called time configuration. So click on that, and you're going to get this set up. Okay. The frame rate currently is NTSC, which is 24 or some, some, some frames a second. We're going to set it to custom. So that means custom, our frames per second is 30. Okay, that's what we're going to try and shoot for. Most of our games we make in here, we're going to actively look for 30 frames a second. Anything faster um, it makes sense, but generally we don't want to do that. We've got our uh, FPS set to 30 frames mm -hmm. per second, and that allows us to sort of understand exactly how long a second is. Also, we're going to have to change our start and end time, but before we do that, let's go ahead and click OK, and let's move this around. So we knew before that we had 100 frames to work with, but now we don't have that many. So let's go ahead and bring this back to, I don't know, 5, bring 50. Uh, we're going to do this all in 30 frames, so let's bring this to 15. 75 is going to come back to... 20, mm, 25, and our final frame is going to be set at 30. Okay, cool. Um, great. This should probably be set to frame one uh, instead of zero. So because of that, we've got one to 30. All right. So let's go ahead and go back into our time settings, and we're going to start our start time right here in animation. Is going to be set to one. Okay. Our length is going to be set to 30. All right, cool. 1 to 30. Our end time should be 30. 30. There. Well, I guess we can start at 0. Okay, cool. Start time set to 0. Okay, now you'll notice our frames are really, really big now, and that's fine. I'm going to drag this over, and that should be fine. We should have four frames between frame zero and five and four frames between 26 uh, and 27. Cool. So, so currently that should work. So our frame 30 and our frame zero are identical. This will be good because eventually we're going to cut this back to 29 and it'll make some sense. So at frame 15, that's halfway across. Okay. So frame 25, we have four frames to the end, like I said before. So now we can get a better idea of how fast this should move. We said before that it needs to be one second. So let's watch it now. Boing, boing. That's pretty good. It's better. It's not real. It doesn't look perfect, but it's way better. So let's go ahead and see if we can adjust this. So if we move this closer, if the, we move these two frames closer, it means it'll go faster to get to its upper position and then go faster. Uh, it'll go fast from down to up. It'll slow down through here and then it'll go really fast from 27 to 30, uh, frame 30. Let's watch it. Doing, doing, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. It still doesn't look very real though. But you see the process. We want it to move really fast at the beginning, then we want it to slow down and then move fast again. Cool. Now, so far, that's all right. Now, when a ball hits the ground, especially if you ever watch it in slow motion, it squishes a little bit. Now, before, we've talked a lot about select and uniform scale, but today we're actually going to use squash and stretch because it is literally made for this. Because at frame zero, we want it to squash. All right, so here we want it to squash. Let's do it by, notice the numbers at the bottom. I want to try and squash it on X and Y by like 120. And then at the top, I'm going to set the uh, squash to nothing. So we'll set it back to 100. Uh, we might have to type it in. 
Let's, um, let's just type it in. 100, 100, 100. Good. Cool. Now, since we have auto key set, it's automatically adjusting. Now, here's the real problem. It changes really quickly. Like, this frame is not actually adjusting. And what I would like is something a lot more like this. So, but we can't have it squash until it actually hits the ground. So, what we need to do is take that squash and make sure that we move it. So, I'm going to actually undo the last squash and I'm going to set it so that right here, it's leaving the ground and adjusting like this. So, we can set it to like 75 or something like that. Boing. And then it gets bigger. And then it's going to come down again. And it's fine until it hits the ground. So here it's going to be a little bit wider to sort of exaggerate it. And here we're going to set it back to what it was before, which was uh, 120. Squash should be 120. I'm just going to set it. 120 by 120 by 183. By, uh, by 83, sorry. 3. Cool. I'll do the same thing at the other end. 120 by 120 by 83. Cool. Now, let's watch that. Boing, boing. Now, notice it's changing at the top. That's not what we want. We won't want it, we don't want it to change so fast. We want it to be when it's in the air. It shouldn't really be changing at all, right? So from here this squash and stretch I'm going to set this to 100 once it leaves the ground bring it's going to by the time it gets here I want it to be back to its normal shape so I'm going to set this at 100 by 100 by 100 I want to make sure it stays 100 by 100 by 100 which it does and then at 3 it's going to be back to 100 by 100 by 100 because it's not like it's going to change if nothing is acting on it all right, now it should start stretching and then boing, and then watch it. Boing. It's super fast. We can actually slow it down to see it a little better um, by going into here, and then under playback, we can set it to quarter time. Okay, press play. Now we can watch it in slow motion. Boing. Boing. Now it's super fast right at the very end, right? If we wanted it to, to drag it out by a frame, Maybe make it a little better. Let's see if that helps. Boing. Just a little bit better. Let's see if we can do it further. Back to 25. And this frame back to 5. I'm going to turn our speed back up. So click time constraints. And click it to 1 times 1 instead of quarter time. So this is the actual speed. Maybe. There it goes. Boing. 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 Now, I think the, the squish right at the end, see how it starts squishing? Now it's squishing too much, right? That, that rotation, that section is too much, all right? So what we really need to do is be able to adjust each one of these individually, and we can. But that will be for next video because we're going to work on the animation curves the next video. I said animation curves, but I think this video is really going to be more about how we adjust the timing of videos, right, or of our animation properties. So when it comes to time configuration and the time configuration window, that's sort of what we focused on today, as well as basic principles of animation. All right, so let's go ahead and stop here. Take a minute, try and get your uh, cube to bounce properly. If you really wanted to, you could see if you can get it to rotate. You can, like let's say you start the rotation here, or even like, yeah, here. You can start the rotation here. Oh, let's do it, it'll be fun. Um, so E, I'm gonna set a keyframe for E, right? Uh, I can just go ahead and hit the key. And I'm gonna set the keyframe at 25, 29. All right, let's set the keyframe. Now let's set the keyframe up here. Hit A for angle snap, make sure it's on. Um, rotate 180 degrees. Set a keyframe. So now it's going to go boing. 
Now see the problem is it rotates back. We can't have that. So we've got it up, hits here, and now we need to keep rotating it to get to this next section, right? So we need to rotate this keyframe, make sure auto key is on. Should be set. Did I change it? This should be set to zero, but whatever, we can do that here. Make sure this set to 360. Boing. Boing. There we go. Play it. Boing. Boing. Now, it's weird because the center of gravity doesn't make sense. The fact that it's pivoting around the bottom is confusing. You can actually see the center of gravity itself. Like, you can see the, the unit here in the center is where it actually makes sense. But because it's rotating around the bottom and not the center of gravity, it looks weird. A lot of what we'll do with deal with it in animation is how where the center of gravity is and whether or not something looks like it, it's believing, or moving in a way that's believable. But really, all of this is going to be kind of bad until we can get to the point where we can actually adjust each individual aspect of the keyframe. So for now, that's the timeline. Um, that's squashing and stretching, which is really great, uh, but only in animation, <laughs> really. <laughs> Um, no, it's got its uses, but generally I use it only in animation and really only in this process. Um, so <laughs> that's that. Uh, but next time, we actually will modify those keyframes. Um, but for now, I think this is a great place to work and stop in. We're going to just do time configuration and uh, animation principles. So that'll be that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.